Hi everyone, Lawrence here and I'd like to welcome you to The Real Grill. Today me and the boys are going to be grilling everything everywhere all at once. So this film is about a Chinese immigrant, Evelyn Wang, whose mundane normal life is about to get turned upside down when an interdimensional rupture threatens to unravel reality. Evelyn must travel the multiverse to gain the necessary power to combat this threat and save the multiverse from oblivion. I can't go into too much more detail than that, but trust me, this was a wacky adventure and we're gonna dive into it now. So let's get cooking. Okay, all right. So, uh, you know, I was just looking at the Wikipedia page for this movie, just real quick. And I just realized it's um, produced by the Russo brothers, as in the no Russo way. brothers really? who did oh, Endgame, yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's funny, because I was, I was waiting for Doctor Strange to show up, I was like, <laughs> where, where, where's Doctor Strange to, to to save this movie? But um, yeah, man, what what did you guys? I mean, did you guys did you guys want to get into the story first of all, first and foremost? Well, yeah, I, I guess this is a um, I think Ow. this is gonna be a, a marmite of a movie in terms of <laughs> people's yeah. perception of it. I think you're really really gonna like the uniqueness of it and the really unique and randomness of it, or you're gonna hate hate it. And I, I'll it'll be interesting to see where people fall on here. Um, in terms of the story, we start off with uh, uh, a Chinese immigrant family uh, with Evelyn, played by Michelle Yeoh, um, going through the struggles of running her laundromat uh, with her husband and also in the process of organising a Chinese New Year's party and also doing her taxes because she's being audited by the IRS. So it's all kind of hectic and it kind of introduces the world um, uh, that she's just a regular person just with... Uh, uh, regularly, regular difficulties and, and the stresses that she's uh, going under. Um, I don't think they, they dwell too much on that. Um, I guess you can probably, people may have difference in opinion, but I think they did a good job in setting up just everything we need to know about her as a character. You didn't um, mention her door. Yeah, I'm going to mention the door. You can go onto the door and then Cam. Yeah, so they introduced you to her door who was trying to... Um get her mother to help her explain to her grandfather that she is gay and introduce her lover which yeah. is um obviously in an old school Chinese family that's not gonna run yeah yeah and yeah. so the husband is trying to reverse serve her with divorce papers oh, yeah. but it was not actually because yeah. everything's so hectic so it's kind of like right it's kind of yeah. like everything so you're, you're kind of presented with this kind of image at the beginning of like kind of the like an okay-ish like a chinese as you said an immigrant <laughs> family but there's all these kind of things underneath the surface where things are starting to break and fall apart which <laughs> obviously the main the main character evelyn she's almost oblivious some of it she's completely oblivious to and some of it is kind of like she's just like feigning ignorance and turning her head away from it um, yeah, just yeah. kicking the can down the road. Yeah. And <laughs> well, all you need to understand is this movie is broken down into three parts, and you start off with part one, which is everything, and it's sort of what they give you. They give you everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, literally. So... Literally. And um, now I feel like this film is very layered. Like, obviously, you've you've got the family dynamic, the sort of dealing with the IRS, as you mentioned, Lawrence, um, and then kicks in the next layer is the whole sort of multiverse slash fantasy element to it where whereby you know she's hopping across different universes and accessing you know different per, per each personality yeah. and it's kind of clever how you know obviously they show you know each version of herself was triggered by a significant moment in time so like it's all like the butterfly effect whereby yeah. a, a little change in her past you know changed the whole tra trajectory of her life uh, yeah, which yeah. you know obviously is why each you know version of herself is so vastly different like there's a chef you know there's someone who's like a, a model like slash actress um, yeah. and you know everything, and I guess, everything in between I guess like obviously this movie came out like more or less around the same time as Multiverse of Madness in it so I guess like in contrast or just before yeah so just in contrast to how it, it kind of explains the multiverse in comparison to Multiverse of Madness I guess yeah, I, I think the explanation and how it is actually presented, it does a better job of than multiverse of madness. Like you said, because yeah. it kind of shows how every decision you make basically splits um, reality in two, and you basically create like a new 
subversion of yourself and it just goes on and on and on infinitely yeah um, yeah, yeah. there's different explanations for how multiverses work so obviously different stories will delve different ones yeah. so this one i think this one delved with the most interesting one because i always find yeah i always found the fact that a different universe is created every time you make a different decision i thought that idea was always interesting so i'm glad they went down that route mm-hmm. yeah but one, one thing i don't get is like what decision did they make which they have hot dog fingers that's what i'm trying to think <laughs> no it wasn't it wasn't it was evolution it was evolution it was evolution, yeah, evolution. Yeah, that's right yeah. Yeah. the monkeys with the primates with the hot dog fingers yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the primates that we uh, yeah. 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 That's that's clever. I, I yeah. totally missed that. That's and in a way, in in a way, that's I mean, it's it's crazy to look at, but in a way, even that was kind of well done because it shows yeah. that obviously the way the world um, develops and progresses isn't limited to just the decisions of human beings. It's limited, kind of, from, basically from the beginning. Like, um, mm. does, does evolution go left or right with evolution with itself? Um, mm. So I thought that was pretty. Well done. I mean, there's one where yeah. there, was, there was just rocks one day. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, it, it got Ruben, crazy. To your, to your comparison with uh, the Doctor Strange movie, yeah. this movie had to explain how their multiverse worked. Yeah. It's a strange. There were previous movies that had touched on how the movie multiverse actually worked beforehand, and also if you watch Loki, for example, they go mm. delve into that quite a bit as well. So that's probably why they didn't go into that deep an explanation of it. Oh, um, what, in, 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 in Multiverse of Bandits, you mean? Why yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Probably because they're... Well, they're I just mean, I guess, as, 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 as a whole, I think it does a, a better job. Um, it does, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this is, this is yeah. the complete opposite from Doctor Strange. Even though the framework is, you know, sort of the same, it's the same kind of um, story, well, same idea with the whole multiverses. I think a lot of people came out of Doctor Strange a little bit disappointed because they felt like it wasn't the, the whole concept of the multiverse wasn't explored thoroughly enough like i think yes. he only he only sort of jumped to two or three universes where it was really explored but in this film they just go the complete extreme of this idea it just like the amount of hopping like not to spoil it or anything but mm. the, the the amount of um, universes that they you know landed in touched upon drew drew from mm. it just got to the point where everything just became a blur it was just convoluted <laughs> And I was yeah. just like, it, it, honestly, if I play the drinking game, where I was, every time I said <laughs> WTF, like, what's going on right now? Yeah, yeah. mate, I would have been on the floor. Like, I would have been. Well, it's like up. it's like the actual, the, like the multiverse in this movie um, is it's integral to the actual story. So without obviously the existence of the multiverse and diving into it, you do not have a story. It's integral. Whereas yeah. with um, with the Avengers and the Marvels franchise, not to keep bringing it back to that, but you almost get the sense that. Um, the multiverse is just something that there exists and they kind of jump in and out of it but it's not integral to the main always integral to the main events of the main let's just say main earth one mm. for example another thing to think about is that when we're learning about the multiverse the main character is also learning about it because she's sort of in the same position we are she's been she's someone's come up to her and said there's a multiverse put this on you've got to do this so they're explaining to her and we're learning the same as her yeah which is yeah. Different, different from dr strange where mm. they're just doing their own thing yeah yeah I mean, did you guys um, struggle to sort of keep up uh, at any point through this movie? Like, yes. especially through the oh, midpoint? After the, office scene, I stopped, yeah. after, the, after the office scene, I stopped trying to keep yeah. up. Like, I, started, <laughs> I started watching after the office fight scene, that, to be honest. Literally, <laughs> I, had to, I had to give myself a breather. I was like, yeah, I, I'm, my mind is just like, I, I'm way <laughs> behind in the first act because I'm still catching up. So I part think, one, I understood, I understood a lot. Part two through me, and then towards the part three, I was like, they're sort of tying up ends that they brought up in part two and one. Yeah. Now this is the kind of film. This sorry, sorry yeah. to cut you off, Cam. This is the kind of film yeah. that requires multiple viewings. Like I have mm. no that like these um you know the directors I think they're called Daniel and Daniel. Like they're incredible filmmakers, but yeah, their movies are not for the regular you know casual audiences, man. You need this is kind of the, the type <laughs> of stuff that develops a cult following over time um because you need to marinate this movie you need to like really think about it really sort of explore the themes really uh, a one-time viewing isn't enough i'm sorry so are you are you suggesting watching it with maybe like multiple monitors like all at once (laughs) (laughs) it's like that's not a bad idea actually at various parts of the movie yeah (laughs) (laughs) that could work oh my days Uh, i don't think i'd be any less confused if i watched it that way an interesting fact about this movie is jackie chan was actually put um approach for this movie and he turned it down oh is it oh is it yeah he was gonna be the main character 
yeah. and Michelle Yeoh's character was a secondary one, and when he turned it down, they pushed for her to be the main character. Ah, oh, right, okay. Oh, Speaking of Jackie Chan, did anyone get like Jackie Chan vibes from the husband when he was fighting, man? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's the character he was going to play, and that would have been the main character, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he would have been perfect. him, but kept the action, yeah. Pretty interesting that, that yeah. you could kind of still kind of draw, you can kind of feel that kind of Jackie Chan vibe just mm. from watching yeah, yeah. how his or everything his character did to that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. really. I was getting, like that first fight scene where he's fighting the IRS security guards. I was, back getting, back. I was getting flashback. Yeah, with his fanny back. I was yeah, getting yeah, flashback. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is yeah. Jackie. This is prime Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way, he, just the way he fires the movements, like the way he, yeah. he was adjusting the strap when he's speaking. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was so cool, but so ridiculous at the same time. Just this is prime yeah. Jackie. They do really do a good job of yeah. um, capturing that. And I didn't know that it was meant to be for Jackie. Yeah. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That. As much as I love Jackie Chan, yeah. As much as I love Jackie Chan, like I'm gonna <laughs> went this way because one, I love that Michelle Yeoh was the main character, and two, uh, her, the husband um, played by was it Jonathan? What? Uh, Kwan, I think it is. Uh, Kwan, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He, he, he had a lot of heart in this movie. He, I think he was he was kind of like Papa. Yeah, he was like kind of the heart of the movie, like to kind of help her, you know, yeah, yeah. journey and stuff. It was yeah. really super serious. So I'm glad things turned the way it did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he's quite a good comedic character as well. I, 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 I literally had, don't think I've seen him in anything since the Goonies. But like, he, he came across almost the same. It's like he just tapped into his childhood self and just came across like, like a Goonies character almost. He had the same kind of voice, the same kind of charisma. Um, it was fantastic seeing him like on screen. It gave me, it kind of, yeah, it was really nostalgic kind of watching his character. Yeah. What did you think of the antagonist of this? <laughs> I, think, I think that silence is golden. Like that silence, mate. Wait, you gotta be specific because there was multiple antagonists. I feel. I mean, uh, the main one, the the daughter, Joe or the version of Tapaki. Yeah. I guess she was like a like she wasn't like the proper antagonist, was she? But she was meant to be like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think her character was really interesting, and I also really love the fact that how she became like that is the fact that what was it? It's like an experiment, and she saw everything, and then it yeah. was her mother. Her mother that, forced her, well, not forced, yeah. pushed her too hard to do those reverse jumps, and yeah. that resulted in her getting those godlike abilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I really, I really like the explanation how it all like turned her into what it was, and then yeah. you know everything else went to how she wanted to show this version of her mother what she's experiencing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, think, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. I think the only thing that kind of didn't do it for me with 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 her character is I feel like they didn't. I feel like with that kind of story, that kind of character, you've got a really good opportunity to kind of um, soak up empathy for the character. Mm -hmm. um, and rather than feeling empathetic towards her, although I did a little bit towards towards the end, I just kept getting crazy vibes from her throughout the film, <laughs> yeah, rather yeah. than rather than em empathy vibes. And I thought um, obviously what, part of the whole thing was obviously that because she's experienced. Um, all the different versions of herself. She's experienced all of the happiness and the sadness. So I think it would have been good to maybe at least throw in maybe even just some scenes or explanations of some of the things she's experienced so you can kind of really feel and empathize actually. This, this character's quite sad. Um, it's not just that she's just nuts and crazy. I think uh, the way they do the story is that we're supposed to follow Michelle Yeoh's character. So when Michelle Yeoh's character went through the same thing and she got to that stage where she was like, well, what's the point? We we're supposed to follow her and feel the same way, yeah. rather than focus yeah. on the antagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the audience is viewing it through Michelle Yeoh's her perspective, character, the yeah, Evelyn's yeah. perspective. So that's why it doesn't go into that that where you do see that kind of how Evelyn, when she becomes this, gains the same powers after jumping so much, you yeah. see her experiencing all those different choices mm. that she could have made or who she could have become and where she flourished in some choices had she not left China for example she would have been a country yeah. master and yeah, a celebrity yeah. that was um, quite well done yeah oh, that's one thing I do have to bring up though it's the fight scene towards the end with the broom and the anus no no <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, about that. Wow. even before that, when um, the, the, the you know the Lay Brothers, the two Kung Fu yeah. brothers, who <laughs> one sat on a trophy and one sat on the oh, the butt plug thing, that oh, was like yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were fighting while it was just hanging out of them. It was, yeah. Can, feel... someone, can someone can someone explain to me how this works? So in in order to connect with um, a different um, version of yourself, 
you need yeah. to experience what pain, trauma, or something like that. Yeah, a very statistically unprobable event has to happen. Yeah. So you yeah, have right. to do something that is so unlike, un, unlikely to happen. So like shoving a, st- a trophy up your ass or oh, eating God. the chewing gum off the bottom of the table. One right, thing that okay. wasn't explained was when Michelle was yo, was jumping through the different universes and getting the necessary like um, skills she needed to fight everyone. It wasn't. Ex- it didn't explain how she knew with what to do to get the right skill yeah because that's what I at was the first, at first it was telling um, the people from the Alphaverse were telling Alpha Wayne what he, she yeah. had to do or what yeah. she had to do uh, but then in the middle second part of, in the middle part of the movie she was just jumping to these different universes yeah. on the fly and getting the skills that she needed for that situation and I think it, it was just pot luck <laughs> But they just showed that the multiverse is infinite. So the chances of you getting the skill useful in the situation Mm. that you need it multiple times in a row is literally impossible. Didn't the guy, didn't didn't um, the the guy, um, like her husband, the alternate value version of her husband, didn't he say to her at the beginning, um, try to focus on a universe where you can fight or something along those lines? So in the universe where you could do the thing that you want to do. Yeah, so I guess that's the best explanation you're going to get. Like, that was just kind of like an afterthought for her. She was just thinking of, give me something which is useful. Although it still kind of makes no sense. That doesn't, that yeah, doesn't make sense because yeah. he She's was not way more experienced and they still had to tell him what yeah. to do in order to get yeah. the right skills. Like the paper cut one where yeah. he had to get paper cuts in between each of his hands. Yeah. That so. was so what? terrifying. One <laughs> thing <laughs> that kind of explains it is, um, not, it doesn't explain... Um, why she knew exactly what to do but it does just make why she could go exactly where she needed to is um from what i understand she's kind of like the original branch that kind of no she's not the original she's the branch that had done done the worst and the most all of her life yeah anything anything you got anything yeah. you got would have been better than her basically mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so she was the closest <laughs> So I think her universe was the closest to all of the right choices, basically. Yeah, right. She why, centered, because centered she's made every other wrong. So, yeah, that's deep. <laughs> that's actually that's actually quite that's actually quite deep. That because when you think about it, that aspect of it kind of does make sense that she would be centered around everything else, which is good. Yeah. Um. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. at the beginning of the movie as well, it showed her going to universes that she didn't want to go to because mm. she wasn't doing the thing correctly. So like one where she had the hot dog hands and she was going like that. <laughs> she I just want to forget about that, 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 that universe completely because that was, yeah. towards the end, I was just disturbing. Brother, remember, did you see the, the, the ketchup and the mustard? No, I don't, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Coming up. No. Oh, my dear. And that's incredible. Like, what's that? Talk about it again, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too, too explicit. Funky. I, love it. I, love I really, I really, I really did like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character though. She, I, I just as an actress as well. Like she was really, um, like charismatic. I feel she, and I felt, I felt like obviously this is un- unlike. Do, do you guys know who I'm talking about? Uh, the IRS yeah. agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is like One, completely like Big Bird. Yeah, <laughs> Big Bird. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is completely unlike roles that she usually plays, I feel, because, you know, she obviously yeah. made herself, like, more ugly and, um, you know, ugly and fat. And she was just yeah. basically, yeah, she's basically just, like, uh, like an old lady. I, don't, I mean, she's kind of old in real life, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think they're trying to go for that generic IRS look. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Mm. But, I mean, what did you guys think of the ending? I know it's kind of, like, rushing to the finish, but... Did, did you guys feel feel it was satisfying? Um, did it sort of tie up everything? I, I wasn't sure how to feel. Yeah, same yeah same me neither. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so understanding so like, what happened, like, yeah, in terms so. of... So she put everything on a bagel, which is meant to symbolise a big black hole, which she designed to kill herself, basically. Mm. I understand that she wanted her mother to understand what she was going through and to kill herself can we, along can, with her. Can we just ask? Sorry, I don't even know what that means, putting everything on a bagel. Yeah. Was it an actual bagel? It's an actual bagel. Yeah. It was an actual bagel. Like, or... I, I, I don't know if it was an actual... I'm not sure if it was a, a metaphor, but from what Wikipedia is telling me, it was meant to be a black hole. And right, I think, yeah. I'm not sure if she created the black hole by literally putting everything on a bagel. She literally put everything on a bagel. Literally <laughs> everything, as in all the stress, her worries, her happiness, all that. Everything. Stuff on a bagel. I don't know how you put stress on a bagel. 
she's a godlike power. Reality is on that bagel. Everything is in. All at once. Don't forget all at once, bro. Yeah, everything. Everywhere. All at once. On a bagel. Yeah, everything. 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 All convinces her not to kill herself and potentially the universe i don't know what would happen yeah. if the universe actually done it but um things we, might be fine things might be I fine mean, for we know yeah. i mean towards the end when they were when she was chasing her as a rock i thought that was hilarious yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean what i kept think what i kept thinking about is that this isn't that I, I kept thinking about there isn't like any like a like anti like final snap for this like she's got a body count she's racked up a body count across universes so even though things work out in the end, she's got a lot of bodies behind her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which, I, it doesn't matter because it's a never-ending universe. But it just equ- it equally made me conflicted. Because obviously I was trying to... I felt something for her daughter, but in contrast to obviously the the bad, evil version of herself, which incorporated a part of her daughter. I mean, they're all, they're all the same person. They're all the, they're all the same person, but I kind of separated those two, and I kind of felt... <laughs> empathy for her just her daughter but yeah. then for the for the evil side of her i kind of just felt like you've racked up a body count you almost don't deserve <laughs> like jump in the hole bro you don't deserve to be here jump in the this you've done this all what just to get your mother to see your point of view like was it really worth it like i don't know well she, well, she did in the end didn't it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's all that matters really. so going back to going back to peter's question i i didn't know how to feel about it i enjoyed the movie i think Maybe. Mm. It's just, it's one of those where you're just like, I might need to watch it again to realise how I think. Yeah, as you said. Um, I could be more definitive. Th- I really enjoyed the movie. I didn't. Really <laughs> <Yeah. enjoyed it. laughs> yeah. Even the confusing elements of it, I just, it's just one of those movies you just go along for the ride and <laughs> if you really want to understand it, then you, yeah, you're going to have to watch it again. Mm. Or read up on it. I did want to quickly ask what, what you guys think. Right at the end where she's like, can she still like look into all the other universes and stuff at the same time? Like it looks like she's yeah she yes. can yeah, she that didn't lose that power. that power yeah so she, she okay. can but she's there, there's, there's no get, in her reality yeah. Yeah. in her yeah. universe. I think but she has the power to to go. What they explained was once you can do it, you that's it. There's no going back. Yeah, yeah okay. But she's but found she didn't or anything either. She yeah. just she just she's naturally just connected to everything. Yeah, yeah but she I think. After going on that journey, she's learned to appreciate what she actually already has rather than looking, oh, what if I'd done this one? And I think that was the main theme of everyone's always thinking the grass may be greener if I'd done this and then that's, or have I done this? But I think the overall theme is that you should be happy in what you have and appreciate mm. what you have rather than always looking at what might have been or what could have been. There's no point could you have no control of that. Mm. And even though she actually does now, she's I've learned to appreciate her husband and yeah and her family and even with all the stresses that come with it um you still have a life that you can live and you should be happy with the things that you have and appreciate them rather than seeking other things and, and taking for granted what you already have Lawrence has done a lot of thought about this bro I know <laughs> man you've been dissecting you this like a mofo you deep dive into the film bro jeez yeah, yeah man you need yeah. to Lawrence, how, many, how many monitors were you watching this on down like? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the whole flipping minority yeah. report this is it, bro. <laughs> wow man alright oh, yeah. No, but this is a this is a great film for like film studies. Uh, you know, if you if you're that kind of person that likes to sort of really analyze films and you know look into the themes and look into the, the sort of um, you know the story arcs and stuff like that. Character character arcs was. I mean, it's a great it's a great um, case study for that. Um, it is very unique. Like it. I'll give it that. Like, unique, I can't yeah. I I can't think of anything else which has made me feel what I felt by watching that movie. This, this movie, I, it was very unique in that sense. Yeah, it felt, it felt like I was constantly. Uh, the longer the movie went on, I felt like I was getting further and further away from understanding what was going on. Yes, until the, on, until the oh point at the days. end where it was less about trying to understand and more just about just taking what's on screen, <laughs> kind of thing. And uh, to add to that, most movies nowadays you can predict 
exactly what's going to happen. You can predict what the main <laughs> character is going to say, what the bad guy is going to say, what the bad guy is going to do, how, what the good guy is going to do in response to the bad guy's actions. Like you can, it, most movies now, because we've just seen so many films and there's only so many ways you can tell a story. A lot yeah. of them follow a, a particular format. So it was nice to go into a movie and see. I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. And I have no idea what's happening. And I just saw this movie and I still don't know. I don't know what the end of that team means. <laughs> So, yeah, um, yeah. From that point of view, it's good that they've done it in a way that, even though it can be confusing, I think it is brave to not go along with the standard yeah. format it's, yeah. of a movie. It's so I, brave. Do agree, I give them points for, for actually just doing something that is outside of the norm. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I agree with both of you, yeah. uh, both you, Law and Ruben. It's brave, but it's also risky as hell because yes. you can lose so many people uh, doing that, you know, because. The, the, exactly. reason, the reason why you have so many uh, cliched storylines in these movies, in general movies, is because they're easy to follow. Yeah, because they're trying to... themselves. Yeah, exactly. It works well, for the majority. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you know, you can, you can follow it, you get, like, you see where it's going, so you're like, all right, fair enough, I know where this is going, so I can anticipate it. But, you know, when, like, like Ruben, I completely, um, uh, I completely agree with what you said uh, before, saying the more the, the more you watch this movie the more lost you became because that's how i felt i was like dude it's like I, 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 like i've got nothing to go off like i'm i'm, I'm literally just like someone just sp spun me around in my seat yeah and i'm just dizzy like i'm just like what is going on right now it was, I was, quite, dizzy, it was quite fantastic when they done it because i feel like they really did and i think it was intentional they tried to make it start from a place of familiarity so just with what you guys were saying about how you kind of it was giving Jackie Chan vibes for me the office scene was actually giving me Matrix vibes um, with the whole with yeah. like obviously at like, the desk and you know the yeah. kind of thing about the yeah. agency coming it giving me Matrix yeah. vibes and I felt like it started from a place of familiarity um, to kind of get you comfortable like oh, okay I can kind of grasp where this is going and then out of nowhere someone gets turned into what like uh, candy or something or just turned into Poof, like a piñata, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah, you know, I was just like, what the hell? And then she beats her match to death with two giant dildos, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like, that no, like, no, no, say, this, this film is basically my mate. You all either love it or you yeah. hate it. I think I think you enjoy it more if you watch it with a group of friends. If it's something you can, you know, have a bit of a drink to, um, you know, just have like a, like a, like a sort of, lads night or you know just friends night uh watching this i think watching it alone isn't as satisfying i don't know if i'm the only one who feels that way but i mean if you I watch this movie high that. you'll be tripping Mate, balls. Uh, <laughs> I don't even wanna think about that yeah. 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 Oh, I was like watching it. <laughs> literally, literally. If you, yeah, if you want a placebo effect of how it feels yeah just watch this movie man honestly oh man so, yeah. so who was who was who were because because my my favorite character was hands down my husband for the throughout the film mm -hmm. that might just be me like fanboying but that was like for me that was the character which kind of kept me grounded oh, sure and right. i thought it was fantastic like obviously like which um, husband? uh the one from earth 396 bro that one the, up there. the mentor <laughs> <laughs> no but like but obviously Ev evelyn's character her thing was obviously drawing on um abilities from our other selves so we don't really really get to see um, the other versions of herself like what they're like but obviously yeah. like you said with Jamie Lee Curtis and with um, the husband um, we actually get to see how their personalities change based on what universe we go to so I, I, I thought that was kind of like consistent with my expectations mm. of what the movie could have been like or what I thought it was going to be like if that makes sense um, so yeah and the granddad was savage as well by the way <laughs> granddad was savage out here bruv like, yeah, there, there was a bit. There was a bit where he was like, "What the heck is going on?" Or yeah, something along those lines. And I was like, "Exactly, what the heck is going on?" Man? But uh, yeah, I think I, I think I made the point, man. And also, can we just can someone also explain to me as well? Because I'm just interested to see if no. you quit on the car. Attempt to explain how did how did she actually defeat the enemies? When she was going up the staircase to get to the donut, um, sorry, the bagel, the bagel, sorry, not the bagel. Um, how was she actually? What was she doing to everyone? Was she giving everyone she, hope, or like she was giving she... them the happiness that they had desired in that particular universe? From why, yeah. rather than hurting them, she was giving them what would have made them happy. So with the yeah. raccoonie, 
Ratatouille. 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 It was getting the Ratatouille back. With the hot dog, hot dog situation, it was getting their relationship back. I don't know. Um, but yeah, whoever made them happy, I can't remember the rest of them. But yeah, the Ratatouille thing. You know, when he jumped on the shoulders and started. Oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, bro, this, this movie was... Oh, this, this madness. Was, uh, I'm not watching it again, Peter. I'm not watching it again. <laughs> right, I'm not watching I it again. Oh, this is a movie I, I could watch again. This is a yeah. movie I could watch again. Um, I may have to watch some parts, but, but yeah, I think... <laughs> just some of that randomness, bro, because... It's one of those movies that if you watch it again, you'll be like, oh, I completely forgot that part. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's just so much that happens in this, but I can't even keep track. Uh, by the way, did any, did anyone did anyone think when after chapter one ended and I think the credits come on, did anyone think that was the end of the movie? Like, did anyone did anyone have to check like how much is left? <laughs> no, I, I was like, I would have like, I was like, there's no way. Like, I would have low-key respected them because that would have been so fucking unexpected. That, that been like, oh, yeah, I would have been vexed. I was like, no way they've ended the movie. Man. Wait for the sequel, bro. Wait for yeah, the sequel. Because like, like, I, was, I was watching for my sister, I was like. There's, there's a, there's, there's a sequel. This, this is just a movie, right? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was at the peak point where you had no fucking clue what was going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you just ended it there, you'd be like... Perfect. <laughs> and, and then part two comes and it's like... That everywhere. Been so we've got, we've got another part three. Okay, so it's, this is not everything yet. Oh, yeah. Now, that being part three was really small. Because I was like, how the hell is that part two right now? <laughs> oh, the movie's done. Wow. Oh. But yeah, that was beautiful. Oh. That was good. Movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd only, I'd only watch this again to see um, the other person's reaction. Like, if if it's someone like John, like I'd say, like, yeah, watch this film. I just want to see, I just want to see what his take on it is, like how how he reacts to it. So, but me myself, I don't know. I can't see myself watching it by myself anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. A good point. Yeah, I'll have to watch it with someone. <laughs> yeah, with someone who hasn't seen it. All. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because that would be funny. Watching it with somebody who hasn't seen it. <laughs> or who knows <laughs> nothing about it. Like, has no know. idea. Just tell them it's a Kung Fu movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just to also, I, I need I need to give a shout out to the guy, uh, sorry, the, the Ratakuni guy, actually. Um, the guy who's in, like, the chef guy. Shout out to him. He actually done quite an amazing job, actually, as well, because I don't know if any, any of you if any of you tried to watch Shadowhunters at all, the series. Might have been me. But anyway, he plays he plays a warlock character in Shadowhunters. Um, I think he, yeah, like a gay warlock in Shadowhunters. And literally, I had no clue it was him. He looked completely different, acts completely different. I guess only I can appreciate this. But yeah, he just done a fantastic job covering his tracks because I had no idea it was him until I decided to look up the characters. Is that Harry Shum Jr.? Is that Sorry? him? Is it Harry Shum Jr.? Harry Shum Jr., yeah. If, if you look at a character from, from Shadow, I me, mean, I, I just didn't. I couldn't believe it was him. I was just like, raw, like, this is a transformation. Mm. Um, yeah, good shout out to him. I think he's done a, quite an uh, amazing job as well um, with his yeah. character. No, it was really funny that. that oh, every every time Rat- Rakakuni came up, I was, I was in his <laughs> 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 like, Rakakuni. Yeah. Nice little callback. The parody film is taking, taking the piss out of everything. All right, did, you, did you guys want to touch on anything else or do you want to get to the final? Ooh, we get Final to the finals. Yeah, I think I've got. Uh, head long enough. My brain, brain still hurts. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's, if it's my do rag or not. Like, yeah, I'm I think I'm, but yeah, I, I can't feel it. <laughs> yeah, I feel, like, like, I feel like I actually learned more from Ooh. this 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 discussion than actually watching the movie. Like about the actual movie. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks to you guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. Really, really, really like, appreciate it. Oh, okay, nice. Thank you for the explanations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I uh, just yeah, you need. I I needed to decipher what the fuck this yeah. film was about. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, man. Honestly. Oh <laughs> man. Okay, cool. I'll I'll just go for. I, I guess I'll go first if you know if everybody wants to. Wait. So yeah, man. I, I'll just say first and foremost. Um, I feel like I'm too dumb for this movie. Um, like it's it's pretty much as I was saying before uh, you're gonna walk out either two train of thoughts you're gonna either love it or you're gonna hate it and I feel like the people that are gonna love it are people that are like proper um, you know movie fans uh, people that like critics for example who watch like loads of movies and constantly see the same thing this is a breath of fresh air because it's different do you know what I mean like as you say as you were saying earlier no idea where it's going um, so it's very unpredictable and it's uh, you know it's very unique you know 
it's experimental, especially with like the humor, uh, the seriousness, um, uh, you know, and mixing that with the emotional, uh, uh, like sort of sense, sentimental moments as well. So that's not something you see every day uh, or see with a lot of movies. But obviously the other reaction is if you're just a casual film goer, you know nothing about this movie, you've not seen the trailer, you just know like, oh, it's about like a multiverse thing. You're like, you're, you're, you're just gonna be completely lost. I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend this if you're just somebody who likes a simple story. Um, Cause even though like the themes are sort of, uh, you're able to grasp the whole sort of parent, daughter, mother, daughter relationship. Um, everything in between is just, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll rack your brain. But it's a great martial arts movie, great filmmaking. I love the camera work, and um, yeah. it's just I like the I like the ideas in general. But yeah, I just this this movie just went completely over my head for the most part. And um, what score would I give it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, careful, I'm, now, careful. <laughs> oh man. I don't know what yeah, I honestly I, don't. I, 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 I honestly felt like Peter, like in, in that little speech, was kind of still going up and down. Like yeah. it was good, but it was just it was. Like, <laughs> yeah, because it is. Like, yeah. Oh, I feel like giving it, give, giving it a score is going to be like playing like roulette, like just spin it and just number, bro. Like. Literally, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, <laughs> like I can't put my foot down. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there was there's a lot to love about this movie, but I think in terms of like making me feel something. I, I just couldn't I just couldn't sort of grasp onto the characters themselves. I, I just couldn't really, you know, um, get into the story. So I think for that reason, I have to give it like a five out of ten. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it in the middle. Um, just yeah. play it safe, really. So I'll, I'll go next. I'm I'm gonna disagree with one thing you said, Peter. I think that was just about how you said uh, like people who watch your eyes are gonna love it or hate it. Mm. I actually think there's a third camp and it's people who just don't know exactly how they feel about it at all. Like, cause when I watched it, I didn't love it and I didn't hate it either. I kind of just felt like I was just staring at the wall in limbo. Like, I'm not sure how that was meant to make me feel, how, how I do, I still don't know completely how I felt about it. Um, so it was quite unique in that sense that it made me come out not hating it or loving it. Um, but I will say the uniqueness of the ideas it explored and how it did it um, and how some of the characters were quite fun and displayed on, on screen. That was the kind of enjoyable side of it for me. And almost constantly getting that kind of shocked wow factor repeatedly. I felt like I was just getting battered with wows like over and over again, like WTF. Um, but that was quite um, a unique experience in itself because yeah, like you said, you could never really grasp onto what was going on and whatever you, whenever you thought like, oh, surely it got crazier than this, they were like, actually, we got something for you, bruh. Um, so yeah. I think I would probably give it a, I think I'll give it a, I want to be generous, I'll give it a seven. Um, just because it didn't bore me, it, I did watch the whole thing start to finish, and it did keep me wanting to understand what exactly was happening up until the end. So it did kind of keep me like involved in the film in that respect, so I think mm -hmm. I'll give it a, a safe seven. Um, but yeah, I, I think for me as well, I would prefer a more serious movie with a bit more depth certainly for the characters and the story rather than just a movie for you to watch when as Lawrence said get a, you can watch it when you're pistol drunk with the lads yeah, like. <laughs> yeah one, one, one thing I, I forgot to mention is it kind of because uh, we keep going back to Marvel films it kind of reminded me of that annoying thing that Marvel films do where they have like a serious <laughs> poignant moment and it's undercut by humour and I yeah. felt like that was just the whole movie because like, I just couldn't take it seriously. And I'm like, you're trying to get serious right now, but it's just like, you're, it's too silly. I just can't, mm. do you know what I mean? I can't get with it. So mm. that's another reason why I couldn't really give it a high score because of that. It, it just kind of shot itself in the foot with the humor, mm. the silliness of it. Anyway. Yeah, if I can go next, because I want to kind of echo what you just kind of said about the humor and stuff. So that's kind of a big thing for me that kind of, Sometimes I felt like it was being a bit too bonkers, like uh, it, it was just trying to outdo itself or so, something like that. And and while I do appreciate how insane it was at times and how creatively, <laughs> wonderfully creatively insane it was, I, I just think it just went overboard sometimes where I was like, oh, come on, okay, okay, just just focus on the characters, can, can I see some more serious moments that can empathize with the characters and everything like that. Um, and I think the 
kind of the whole first part for me was a bit of a chore to get through. I think Peter was kind of the same because I think you had to kind of watch it in two different parts, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I yeah, it was really hard to get through that first part for me. I'm not entirely sure why though, because I feel because usually I'm okay with like slow kind of thing. I think I'm gonna like, like we've said before. I will definitely have to watch this again, and I think it might be worth like. <laughs> maybe in the future doing like an, another review after watching it a few more times or something <laughs> <laughs> it might change our ratings afterwards but at the moment I'm still like oh, oh, I'll have to against that now bro <laughs> 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 I don't know where to focus my head on right now it's like insane but I can, I can say I really appreciate from a filmmaking standpoint it was so beautiful, brilliantly directed every universe felt like its own world like the way it was shot as well it was it was yeah just from a filmmaking standpoint it's like Chef's kiss, like beautifully done. It's just that I wish there was more with the story and the character and stuff that I could have appreciate. Well, I did appreciate the mother-daughter relationship and everything with the exclamation of multiverse, um, all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed. But um, yeah, I just felt like there was they, they could have done more with it. Um, and I guess I'll just say it again is that I just don't know how I completely feel about the actual movie <laughs> all together. So. So I'm gonna be a bit generous as well. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll keep it as a seven as well, seven out of ten. But I think yeah, we should probably reevaluate after watching it a few more times after. It's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, nuts. Uh, I'll go next. And um, for me, uh, first off, like Ruben said, when I finished the movie, I didn't know what to think. It took me a while to think about it, to, to, to pin down whether how I actually felt about the movie and I would say I enjoyed it it was a good movie I, I, like Peter was saying you couldn't really predict what's happened next and I like that because like Lawrence as well you go to movies you predict stuff you're just like okay so they're just going to pop out that door he's going to shoot him him and him and then walk off like it, like it was nothing <laughs> and this this movie it, it just came, came out of left field you just didn't know what was happening and I really like that because there's there's a lot of movies that I will see and I'll read the plot and I'll be like well, I've heard all of this before. This seems like a movie I've seen a hundred mm-hmm. times. I'm not going to watch this again. And this movie, I could probably watch this two or three more times and come out with different thoughts each time, mm. which is what I like. Each time you watch it, you'll see, you'll notice something different or it'll hit you a different way in your feelings. And I, I like that about the movie. So for me, I'd have to give this an eight. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Understandable. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just piggyback on what Cameron said. Yeah, I agree with everything um, you guys have said. I loved the wackiness and ridiculousness of this movie. I think it was actually one of its strengths. I think it didn't take itself too seriously, even though there were some serious themes along with it. I thought the performances from Michelle Yeoh and from the husband, Jonathan Keaton in particular, I think they were stand out. I did really love it. Uh, the way they filmed um, the set designs, the the film, the cinematography of, it, of the films, the different universe, Versus the way they explained the traversal, like you're not comparing it to Doctor Strange, there was only two or three multiverses in that movie, in a multiverse movie, whereas this, there were at least 15 to 20, lost count, of, and they were all absurdly different in some aspect or another. I thought a lot of this was structured. Um, from what Ruben said, when I finished watching the movie, I was probably in that camp as well of not knowing how to feel about it. Mm-hmm. However, after doing this review with you guys and it going through and talking about it, <laughs> saying it stop smiling, just thinking back to all the parts of it. I, I, and, and I would love to watch this movie again, just to see it. I'd give it a break between just so if I watch it again, I would probably not remember certain parts and it would be fresh in my mind just because there's there's so many um, different things you can take out of it and in, in more of more views and there's not many movies that that do that and i'm usually quite critical of movies that make require research after the fact to understand certain parts of it i'm usually very critical because i think a well-told story should explain the key points it needs to without me having to go to wikipedia but even in this i didn't mind actually searching for more information about figuring out what is and it is a very risky strategy but in in the main i think it pulled it off so putting all that together I would give this an 8.5. Ooh, 8.5. 8.5. All the scores have been yeah. going up, up, up yeah, the trajectory. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's, it's fitting that you started with me, who had the lowest score, and then you yeah. Know, yeah. gradually <laughs> went up. Yeah, I mean, um, literally just went in the same. Yeah, thing. literally just went up. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I do want to say one thing. I feel like if this film doesn't win an award for the editing, then it's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's. Some of them cuts were just like mind blowing. Honestly, yeah, man. I don't, yeah, I, I don't envy whoever edited this movie, but they did a, a brilliant job. <laughs> yeah, with, uh, the scene on the stairs, it. man. Like, I think that was that like, one of the first fights in stairs with the slow mo. That was quite intense, mm. like um, quite a spectacle to watch. For sure, <laughs> yeah. man. For so, sure. Yeah, so, sweet. Thank you for taking the time to watch our review of Everything Everywhere All at Once. Some mixed reviews on that one. Some of us loved it. Some of us not so much. You let us know your thoughts on the movie in the comment section below and we'll see you guys on the next review. Appreciate it guys, thanks.